Hey guys, and welcome to another brand new video. In this video, the PlayStation 5 has one of its most heavy hitter games having massive issues, which has now actually been avalanching down to affecting the future corporate side of a lot of other various games. Now, as you guys probably know, PlayStation has some pretty big lock-ins with a company called Square Enix, and as well as also made a lot of really beloved games, and has a pretty good, close, personal business tie towards Sony and PlayStation. But right now, the sales are looking a little bit more on the bleak side, and we also had a lot of really big outside projections discussing the fact that they're going to have to tone down and start canceling games and have to be even more selective in the future, mainly noting off the PlayStation 5 sales failures of the most recent Final Fantasy Rebirth, which they were actually expecting a lot more bigger and better sales. Now, I still think the game was phenomenal and over, like, long term, and also because it's a part two of a game, we'll probably keep on getting more and more sales, and as well, if there's going to be a third part two as well, there will most likely be a even more higher influx, so it's not all doom and gloom, but it's going to be very interesting to see on how this has affected the company itself, how PlayStation may have played a part in it, so we're going to talk about that throughout the video. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on, we're going to be doing some Twitch stuff down below right now if you guys want to go check it out, and of course, as well, I just appreciate you all for watching. So if you guys have, may have had a chance to go and see Right now, we've been seeing a lot of articles, even IGN over here, discussing were the Final Fantasy VII Rebirth sales struggling? And people have had a chance to look through the experts and kind of look through the numbers. And while it's not horrible, it is somewhat concerning. And like I said, we've actually had even more bigger coming out over here from the actual, like, figureheads and stockholders, the people who basically talk to the stockholders and shareholders, and they're kind of basically able to try to calm down their sales. So Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth launched as a PlayStation 5 exclusive at the end of February and met with critical acclaim. IGN's Final Fantasy VII Rebirth review, for example, awarded Square Enix as a 9 out of 10 and they got the game was fantastic. Although they have yet to announce a sales figure for Rebirth, the second game in a planned trilogy of remakes of the simul Final Fantasy VII, it, this is itself is telling. The company has announced launch sales for recent Final Fantasy games, for example, such as Final Fantasy XVI, and it sold over 3 million copies during its first week on sales. And also, Square Enix announced Final Fantasy VII Remake shifted 3.5 million copies in the first three days when it launched on the PS4 in April 2020. PlayStation 5, 50, or not PlayStation, Final Fantasy 15 sold 5 million units in its first day. Kind of crazy, in all honesty, to be fully honest. But the game launched in the PS4 and Xbox One in November 2016, and Final Fantasy 15 remains the fastest-selling game, which is kind of funny because most people kind of critiqued it pretty heavily. Although right now, no one has seen any comments on the Rebirth, which is the part two, as well. So a lot of people are kind of now debating on it, seeing if it was actually even good, and they were also stating that some of the leaks that it was underperforming sales-wise, and it was selling about half of what Remake sold in that same time frame. So still a few million, but quite a bit less. Additionally, Ahmed said it was looking like Rebirth had a weaker tail than Rebirth had prior to any release in a subscription service such as PlayStation Plus. In the UK games industry, uh, head honcho Christopher Dring reported that Rebirth launch sales were down 34% over the remake launch, but up 6% over launch sales of Final Fantasy, I believe, maybe 14, if I'm correct, or maybe 16. A uh, slightly confusing picture in Great Britain. Uh, how about in Japan, though? We've had hard data for physical game sales there, but not download sales information. So by going by physical sales, Rebirth had a tough time compared to other recent Final Fantasy games. Rebirth enjoyed the second biggest PS5 launch in Japan, behind only Final Fantasy 16, with around 250,000 copies sold compared to Final Fantasy 16's 300,000. So it is still lower regardless. And as well, also Final Fantasy 16 had a really bad staying power. They're also saying it's a less rosy picture when compared to other Final Fantasy games, such as the remake, for example, sold 700,000 copies in launch, whereas 15 sold 700,000 too as well. So people are kind of confirmed because they're like, hey, this actually might be worse sales than expected. They're not saying it's necessarily like a struggle because, you know, they're still getting sales and getting all this good stuff as well. But also I have my random mod up in the OP, so if you guys don't mind that. But when it came to all this other various information going on, it kind of goes to show that they did have a lot of issues where things were happening when it comes to the game itself as a whole. Uh, like, they just didn't have, a, like, a big poll. I didn't really see a lot of people on Twitter or Twitch or YouTube talk about it. And while there was a lot of sales for the game itself as a whole, it wasn't anything super, super big. Uh, so it's kind of crazy. And there also was lockdowns, and Final Fantasy XV took a very long time to make. So people were looking forward towards the stuff for a long time, or better, opportunistic times. But it's crazy to see because the game itself was a little bit on the rougher side, basically saying it's still worth following the data to see, because it might still get a lot more consistent sales, and as well, like I mentioned, maybe when the third game comes out, they have a chance to rock it out. 
At the launch, it actually ended up in February. It ranked fourth by daily active users on the PS5, surpassing games like GTA V, Apex Legends, Helldivers, and Roblox, but did go and fail to go beat Call of Duty, Fortnite, and EA Sports as well. Rebirth's active user count has dropped off considerably too as well, which would make sense though. It's a single player game. You go through it, you beat it, or you kind of get to the stopping point, whatever it might go and be. And it's kind of worth to go and see because the game itself is doing rough. But either way, now Square Enix is now saying due to all of this, it will be a more selective with spending following a lot of huge losses. This also kind of goes and ties into with things like Forspoken, if you guys remember that game, that didn't really make as much money, and other various Square Enix games that were on the rougher side. Square Enix had us published a notification of recognition of extraordinary losses with the fiscal year that ended on March 27th. The company expects these losses to be around $22 billion, which translates to around $140 million. In an effort to avoid similar losses in the future, the company plans to make some major changes into the way its video games are developed, and basically they're now cutting out games. They have to revise the group's approach to the development of high-definition games with the intention of being more selective and focused in the allocation of development resources. Basically saying they're paying devs a lot of money, people work in the games a lot of money, and at the end of the day, like they have to make sure that they're going to turn a profit. Which kind of goes back to the big AAA issue, where a lot of these bigger games are just not making enough money. Or look at Spider-Man or other various games where you can make money, but it's like a very, very daunting hundreds of millions of dollars to go and make these going on. And a $140 million loss is huge, especially because, well, they will still make passive money and income from these games, but that's still horrible to go and see. It basically means they're less, you know, less likely to want to keep on pushing. So saying at this time, it's too early to tell, but we can take a look at some of the company's recent games to get a better idea of what's happening. In Final Fantasy, uh, both 16 and set, uh, 7 Re like Rebirth were AAA games that were released during that year. And they both had good reviews and people liked it, but they really didn't get enough sales for the games as a whole. This also might have also been part of them being PlayStation exclusives, not coming on PC, not coming on Xbox, and at the same time, like... The games are good, but you need people to want to buy them. And if you don't have a big enough market, people aren't going to go be buying the game overall. Saying it's possible those projections are simply too high, as some people have argued, or that Square Enix is simply spending too much on development, which I'd also maybe agree, although the games are good, and also are timed exclusives, which also does cut down the big audience. So Square Enix right now is kind of bleeding. Like They're not doing so good in terms of money, and they spent and overspent on games, which I really do think is becoming a big issue. It's also possible that some of Square Enix's games are simply taking too long to make, which results in ballooning development costs because you have to pay people to make assets and, you know, audio, music. And although the games are fantastic, if they're not selling well, they may be overly doing it. It's been seven years since the last numbered entry in the Dragon Quest series, and fans have no idea when the next game is coming. Meanwhile, an HD 2D remake of Dragon's Quest 3 was announced three years ago, and it's still not coming out. And a lot of them are also saying they're trying to go make these games more focused on, say, like Final Fantasy games, which makes sense because it's making them money. But at the end of the day, it looks like they're canceling all these games. Saying Square Enix has suggested it's canceled or rescoped unannounced game projects as it continues to reassess its overall development strategy. So it kind of stinks because they're doing like this huge fundamental review of their development process, and they may not even want to take as many risks on games. So something like think like Square, like a lot of their Square Enix games or like a Forspoken, they may not just want to give them on out. As well. So during the conference call on February, Square Enix president Takishi Kiri reportedly said, We are reviewing from scratch what the organizational structure is and what the best ways to implement the contents of the pipeline. The publisher is reportedly keen to reduce the amount of development and outsources to external studios, so more in house, which is hopefully ideally cheaper and more so like quality control and maybe more consistent, and wants to focus on in house development for its more high profile titles. So basically making sure that Final Fantasy games are always being taken care of. With the aim being to increase both quality and profit margins. According to an analyst who spoke to Bloomberg, the new development process will include a new checking mechanism that will let the company make decisions on a game's quality at an earlier stage. Probably basically being like, hey, we want to see you focus on getting like chapter one done. And then we're going to play through chapter one. If we like it, we see potential. We're going to keep going for it. And if not, we're probably good. And it's rough because you guys can even see it's lost over nearly $2 billion, which I may want to do a little bit of a deeper dive in if you guys enjoy this topic. 
But basically, same like Final Fantasy Rebirth and all these other bigger games have just been unperforming. And there's so many very small issues that might be included with it. We don't really know why, but it could just be a factor of everything. And as well as maybe less people playing games too on top of that. And also the smallest install base, PlayStation 5 game and everything. So I want to kind of hear your thoughts on everything down below. Make sure you guys are subscribed with the notifications on. We got the Twitter and Twitch room as well. I appreciate y'all for watching here in the first place.